All right, I got to tell you, I'm excited because listen to this now. This is live with Gil, and it's going to be coming up Sunday, October 20th, my wife's birthday. Mud fossils, fascia, and more with Roger Spur. Now, next week I'll be teaching my last lab class of the year, an institute for anatomical research in Colorado Springs. That's his last lab class, but he's he's doing tours. He's doing a tour in, in Colorado Springs before heading out west with Rachel for the final loop of the nerve tour. They're going to be presenting in another 13 more cities. <laughs> 13 more cities before year's end. He did one a week everywhere around the country and in Canada too, I think. And then in January, he's offering several live stream nerve tour opportunities and nice, nice guy. So I'm looking forward to this because this is going to be put in front of people that would refuse to examine this stuff normally. Now, they're going to come and sign in. They've watched Gil, and they trust Gil, and they know he's, he's a real up, straight-up guy. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting presentation for me. And, and I'm, I'm very, very thankful to Gil, and uh, I hope it works out for everybody. All I want to do is present, you know, things that are factual. Okay, I am really proud to be a friend of Gil's and to have him treat me as a friend. I don't get that <laughs> very often. Uh, now, this is how I hooked up with Gil. This is 15 years ago. He's got over a million views on this. Fascia and stretching, the fuzz speech. This was, they called it fuzz back then. And then, a few, a few you know, he talked about how you, you can get real stiffened up when you know, we talked about a lot of stuff but then after three years he had 15 years ago was the fuzz speech reconsidering the fuzz and you know we had worked together on this trying to understand what this layer was that i was finding and and he's talking about movement and he, he goes all over the world he teaches everywhere About the heart, about the muscle tissue. This is a fabulous one. This is strolling under the skin, and she is fabulous. And this is how the f these are all blood vessels, and they move and straddle. Watch this. Ah, never mind. You see it? They actually the 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 tendon moves inside, and the blood's. The, that follows it. But inside a tendon, you have almost no blood at all. It surrounds the outside. There's some blood, yes. But inside, the fascia, the fascia is the outside surrounding it. I, I get carried away with this. <laughs> and here's Gil again, Gil again, Gil again. He's, he's all over the world. He's, he was the, virtually the only guy that knew anything about her. So anyway, that's that's Gil Headley, and I'm going to be on his show, and hopefully, uh, people will see what these things are because he can anatomically confirm what I'm saying. I have the test, I have the DNA test, I have CAT scans, I have all that stuff. So, for him to anatomically say yes, that is how the body is constructed, and you know, because I'm going to show things like, well things like this. I think I got these up here. About like this. That's a heart. He'll know that's a heart. That's the plumbing of a heart. That's the valves of a heart. That's the tendinous area of a heart. That's the gluid area of the heart. The plumbing pops right off. And that is comet, I mean, uh, asteroid venue. And they got a sample back on here on Earth. And that is it right there. And those are heart sarcomeres. And they are sandwiched between two layers of phospholipids, which turn into phosphates and surround the sarcomeres. And these are the sarcomeres in the muscle of a heart. The same thing. There's, there's no difference. None. Zero. Zero difference. No viva la difference because there is no difference. They are the same. The blocks of muscle 
is the phospholipid layer above and below, and that came back from this heart, which separated the plumbing from the valves, which happens virtually all the time. I see that all the time. Here's exactly where it breaks, right here. Snap right there, and you can see right down through the valves. I, a friend of mine got one, it's just it's still saturated with blood. You see right at the top of those valves. It breaks right off there. And the plumbing goes away. That goes floating off into space. I don't know where it goes. And I'm, I, I think I showed you, or I will show, I think I showed you in the last video. I have s several hearts here that one of them is broken like that, and one of them isn't broken. It just happens one way or the other. But primarily, this is glued to the base of the heart. It's just glue. And they dry out and break off. Or when they cook, they fall off, I suppose you'd say. You see? It's right about this area, right up here. It's just glued on there. All that stuff goes away. And you end up basically like this. All that's gone. End up with this. All right, remember before I showed you this and I said it breaks off right at the plumbing, just breaks off. This is what you end up with. This right here this is where the heart valves are. These are where the valves are right here. And of course, you have most of the rest of the stuff, but all this plumbing, off it goes. And that's what you end up with, it, it, is what you're seeing right there, basically. That stuff goes. It's glued on there. All right, you see that? That's a tube coming out there. That's a tube. That's coming out. That's not an impact. And all of these basically are blood areas where they were at the surface and they were so heated that they exploded and popped out. Like these are popped out red blood. You see the black, the yellow, and the red? Anybody that didn't understands mud fossils knows that's the colors of blood. Anybody that understands iron oxidation knows it as well. It's red, orange, and, and uh, black. Now, I remember I told you I had a friend that found a heart and cracked it open and it was still wet blood inside it? Well, here it is. Unfortunately, it was Phil Harris, unfortunately, passed away. There it is right there. And here's the different colors of the blood. Now, he found, he saw this rock. Now, again, he passed away, so I can't, I can't get any more information anymore, but he, he saw the rock, and he saw this red spot, and he whacked it with a hammer, and it separated right along that line. And this side had the red blood in it. It must have been down. I never really got to talk to him much about it, but this side must have been down, and the other side I will show you is off like this. If you put it back on top of here, you're going to see it would run out this way. And the other side is almost all blacked out, except this their very edge. All right, so the red blood ran down and must have puddled down here. And there must have been some kind of a tiny, tiny little air gap. That's the only thing I can take from it, because here's the other part of the heart. This one here is, he just put his hand in there, is red blood. And here's the other side, which is not red blood. But that one little spot there was still basically attached. And that's where that little red spot was on the side. He whacked it. And it came out. Now, you can see where the tubes are running out here. Those are those tubes that run out <laughs> just like a regular heart tubes. You see it? Look. You see it? They come out of here and they go out. And it broke right off here. We can see down, and that's where he puddled his finger in there. And these go out, and we can see all the little tube spots. And this is not, it's not hard to understand. And if you took this and put it up on top of the other one, you, that's where the heart was. That's what he found. And he freaked out when he said, and this was, I was putting out what I called a 15 minute challenge. And I said to everybody that was watching my stuff, I said, 15 minutes, you're going to find something. I guarantee if you look correctly, you're going to find something. 
15 minutes he found that. Tish Egerton found all new species of feet from no toes. You know, there is a lot of different no toes, but she she went on 15 minutes and found absolutely stunning, stunning stuff, stunning. And um, and this is the kind of stuff that's denied by academics. So, you know, I don't like to complain and grumble and rah, 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 all the time, but what are you going to do if you're denied reality? And that means the whole world. This isn't just me. I'm trying to present what I want somebody to analyze, especially this. That costs billion dollars, billions, billions and billions of dollars. That is a heart muscle, sarcomeres, with layers of phospholipids, and that is a heart muscle sarcomere assembly with layers of phospholipids that came back from Comet Bennu or Asteroid Bennu. Before they even came back, I said, I know what it is, it's a heart. And there's, there's, there's nobody, there's no anatomist on the entire place of the planet could deny that. It is absolutely 100% for certain a heart. As you can see right there. And so is Psyche. And to, to deny these kind of things and spend these kind of billions of dollars and then there's another probe out to do this, another probe to do that. Why don't you take a look at what's reality before you start just, you know, doling out the cash. Basically, that's what I'm seeing now. I'm seeing a denial of reality for funding. And it's across the board. And the politicians are just as bad. Well, they're worse. <laughs> but it starts there. It starts everywhere now. It's, uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't want to be a downer for everybody, but I think we should start looking at the ancient texts and find out what they did say about how people would act, and they're acting exactly as they would say. They're doing exactly what they said they're going to do, and they are doing it right now. <laughs>